All right, so we're going to ask how close is the approximation of sine of x if we're using just that first order uh, estimator. Um, so what do we know about this? We know that the error or the absolute value of the remainder is less than or equal to the n plus 1 derivative at, oh, I'm sorry, I miswrote, but m times uh, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Uh, well, it's x minus it's x minus a, but in this case we're going to use sine and sine centered at zero. So I didn't I didn't put in that a was zero. Will you forgive me? Yes. Good. All right. So moving on. So here we have it. And then what is this mythical m about again? It's the, the largest in absolute terms of the, that the n plus one derivative takes on. So. <laughs> in this case, this is the first derivative, so really we need to go all the way down to the second derivative to figure out what that derivative is. All right? So if the first function is sine, the first derivative is cosine, the second one is going to be negative sine. All right? And then, so we're going to ask the question, what is the largest value in absolute terms? One. That it that that function takes on in this really small range. One. Nine. Okay. If you if you wanted to be really conservative, you could say one. If we actually could have the ability to calculate sine at such a low value, we could get even an even more aggressive. Right. I mean, at ten to the negative three, do you think that sine is at least, let's say, root 2 over 2? Yeah. yeah I, you could be more aggressive there. Could you go even to a, a sine of 30 degrees? 1 half? You could go even more See how I'm just, I don't need to know exactly what sine of, sine of 10 to the negative third is to be more aggressive in my choices of m. All right? I might, so I might say, you know what? Let's go with at least one half. Let's go with 10 to the negative 3 to the second power. Yeah. And that's going to all be divided by. Two. No, no, sorry. Yeah, that's 2. And then uh, 2 factorial. 2. And let's go ahead and switch over the calculator to find out what that is. screen there for a second. Back out to home screen. Um, so it looks to me that's going to be 10 to the negative third to the squared. And then I am going to divide it all by 4. Oops. Multiplying by 1. Sometimes I really hate the new, there we go, divide by 4. So yeah, so the 2 factorial is 1 of the 2, and then the 1 half on the, on the, on the numerator, I bring that down. So it's like divided by 4. Okay, so we are going to say, based on this, that it's really close to 0, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 10. Now again, I chose 1 half. As, uh, as my estimator, I probably, could, I probably could have gone even more. And we're going to see that I think that on this particular range, this value is actually, um, this, this tolerance is actually even a little bit high. So let's go ahead and let's, let's support this graphically. Support it graphically. Let's go. Uh, here we're going to put in x, the... <clears throat> the Taylor polynomial estimator. Let's put the real function, sine of x, in here. And here I'm going to what? Put absolute value of y1 minus 
by 2. And I really only want to graph the last thing, right? Uh, yeah. If you would graph the first thing. Well, we should know it. <coughs> no, we're just going to do the last one. We're going to set up our window. Our X range is going to be from 10 to the, whoops, 10 to the negative, whoops, that's not right. Um, negative 10 to the negative 3, all the way, and I guess I can just put that in by hand. Is that all right? Sure. All right, so let's do a, uh, a zoom fit. And let's see graphically whether that ends up being true. So there's the error function. Of course, there's the least amount of error at zero because that's the center. And it looks like it can go to either edge. So let's go uh, second calc value and let's do it at 0 0.001. And 2.5 times 10 to the negative 10th is bigger than 1.67 to the 10th. So we seen that we, we found it graphically. Sorry, we found it theoretically, and the real answer is indeed bounded. All right? That's good. Cool? Can you tell me why we picked the second derivative? Okay, it's a great question. We chose the second derivative because if we, were est if we are estimating sine x as x, this is the first term. This is a first order Taylor polynomial. And I need to go one further in order to start looking at the remainder stuff. Okay. So we go to the second because this is first. Any other questions? Number one, 21, done.